Well, Judge D- uh, Doty vacated the arbitration award, so technically it goes back to the arbitrator, Harold Henderson, but he made it very clear that uh, if you bounce it back again and say the same thing, it's probably not a good idea. So, uh, you know, the NFL can go a couple of different routes. Uh, you know, they could uh, obviously they can appeal. Uh, you know, Henderson could review it again under the old personal conduct policy, so to speak, instead of the new one, uh, and reinstate Adrian that way. But the bottom line is the NFL got what it wanted, and that was Adrian Peterson off the field for the 2014 season. I think he's going to be reinstated uh, on April 15th or shortly thereafter anyway. So we're talking about, you know, uh, five, six weeks. Uh, I think, you know, they'll cut their losses. But you never know. The pettiness of the NFL, you never know. But that's uh, the eventual end game is Adrian Peterson's going to be playing somewhere in 2015 it's just a matter of where all right john now where is the that is the next question where are his rights currently and what happens when he is in fact reinstated uh he's he's under contract to the vikings and the vikings have every right to bring him back uh you know they'll have to make a decision he's got a very high cap number so there's a question with the as a whole just from a pure football perspective the devaluation of the position uh there's a question whether the vikings want want him to be uh at that number anyway which would be the the highest paid running back in football uh so that enters into it uh the fact that he he's bitter at the organization we talked about that uh last week and and specifically the coo of the organization kevin moore Warren, so there's uh, there's the part that you know Adrian's heart may not be in playing with the Minnesota Vikings. So uh, all of that comes into play. Uh, I think the football people in in Minnesota want him back because they understand what he could mean uh, to that offense, and specifically with a, a second year quarterback who looks like he's got a chance to be really really good. Uh, if you have that kind of running game behind you. That's only going to make things easier. So I think it was just football in the equation. I I don't think there's any question that he'd be back, back, but there's so much more to it. And and the fact that that maybe he thinks the organization didn't back him in his time of need is is a difficult hurdle to overcome. It is, John. And and as everybody kind of, I think, you know, the misunderstanding is when he's reinstated that he's almost a free agent and can just pick and choose where he wants to go. A lot of people have suggested Dallas. Is it going to be an ugly situation uh, between him and the Vikings? Can you anticipate this being something where he decides, you know what, I might sit out again because I just don't want to play for you? Well, you know, that's easy to say. And, you know, but when you're scheduled to make what Adrian Peterson is scheduled to make, that's just not feasible. So, you know, something would get uh, worked out. He's under contract to through 2017 with the Vikings. So uh, I think his cap number is a little bit over $15 million next year. Right. It goes all the way up to, I think, $17 million by by the time his contract is over. So you're talking about upwards of, you know, $45 million to walk away from. I, I just don't think that's a logical end game for Adrian Peterson. So uh, the one thing Mike Zimmer, the coach of the Vikings, has said, it's a two-way street. He kind of understands that, you know, if, if Adrian doesn't want to be back, uh, you know, the Vikings will do everything as far as trying to accommodate him. But that means also getting back something in return, uh, and that means working on a trade. He's certainly not going to be able to, to point to Dallas and say, I'm going there. Uh, John McMullen's with us, the NFL editor, sportsnetwork.com. We'll get to John's mock draft uh, as uh, this is the time of the season. Tis the season for the mock drafts uh, in just a moment, but there's plenty more of NFL players that uh, are in the news, including here in Philadelphia where the Eagles are planning on cutting Todd Harriman's. John, I don't think this is a huge surprise, uh, but what does it indicate anything by letting Harriman's go about their offseason or what's about to happen for Philadelphia? No, I don't think so. It, it, it's, you know, you're talking about, a, I, I think Todd's 32 years old, so, you know, and he's a descending player. He's been a very good player uh, for Philadelphia over the years, but there's no doubt that uh, he's on the downside of his career. 
uh, didn't play all that well last season. And and the fact of the matter is that uh, uh, it's too big of a cap number for for the Eagles and 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 the way that he's been playing. So uh, I don't think it's just the nature of the game uh, and the fact that uh, as you get to the you know 30s, almost a dirty word in the NFL. Uh, once you cross over that. Uh, uh, that demarcation line, people start thinking about your replacement. And when you're scheduled to make over $5 million and, and you know, you're a guard, uh, people think they can get a, a a cheaper option. I think that's the way the Eagles are thinking. Yeah, they'll save $2.8 million bucks by uh, getting rid of Harriman's. And we asked that question last year when he got hurt and was put on the injured reserve. Was that the last time we've seen Harriman's? Been a long-time Eagle uh, but obviously today they're going to make that move to move on. And this is the time of the year, John, where we see guys start to get released. We saw A.J. Hawk yesterday. Uh, we saw, obviously, Reggie Bush yesterday. Are there any other names uh, that you kind of have your eye on that you think could be possibilities uh, to be cut that could help some teams out once they get released by their teams? Well, there's always going to be veteran guys, as we just said, with high cap numbers. And, and first, first and foremost is Adrian Peterson, because we're going to have to see that. Uh, but, you know, as you look at each team and you look at the guys that are scheduled uh, to be a high-level uh, salary, you mentioned the Packers, their inside linebackers. Not only did they cut A.J. Hawk, but they also cut Brad Jones. So, you know, you look at Matt Schaub uh, with the Oakland Raiders. You look at uh, for, because there's such a dearth of quarterbacks or, around the NFL, and we talk about maybe the best uh, the best players on the free agent market are, are people like Mark Sanchez and Jake Locker, a guy like Matt Schaub or, or Matt Castle with the Vikings. They might be released because of uh, of cap numbers, and uh, obviously uh, when you talk about quarterbacks, you're talking about high-profile high guys, but, you know, if you look around the league at, at, at just guys who have high cap figures, they're always in danger. And if they, as we just mentioned with Todd Herman's, if you're approaching the age of 30, that just enters into the equation. John, obviously, uh, you know, as we move on to some other stories in the NFL, it's amazing to me. I know every offseason are pretty busy, but there seems like there's so much going on in the in lieu of some off-the-field stuff, this Greg Hardy stuff now. How has the stuff that happened with Peterson – affect it Hardy because it seems like once the Peterson thing came down then Hardy wants to get reinstated because he's another name that's going to be in my opinion pretty interesting if he's out there on the free agent market yeah and it's interesting how that comes around because if you thought about when it happened it's sort of like you know the Vikings handling of Peterson during the season kind of spurred the Panthers reaction to Greg Hardy and and now that uh Adrian Peterson's uh, suspension has been vacated. Obviously, Greg Hardy wants his vacated. So, uh, but again, from the NFL's perspective, I think they already got what they wanted, and that was the fact that they wanted these guys to go away. They didn't want them on the field last season. So, uh, when you look at it from their perspective, they accomplished their goal, and I think there was always the assumption that each was going to be back and be able to play. Uh, in you know 2015, so I think that really hasn't changed much. John McMullen, the NFL editor, SportsNetwork.com. As we told you earlier, the judge rules in favor of Adrian Peterson, so he could be back, as John said, sometime possibly uh, April 15th. You just heard about Greg Hardy right there. Uh, we obviously are going to have uh, some more cuts coming down here, but let's look at some draft stuff. John, as uh, you have your mock draft up over at SportsNetwork.com right now, and so many people anticipating that Jameis Winston will be number one. After the combine, it seems like you feel the same way. Is he a slam dunk number one in this draft? Yeah, I do. I, You know, there's really only two things that could take him out of it, and one is the fact that they find something structurally wrong with a shoulder, but he's already been through so many – MRIs and things like that. I, I don't think that's going to happen. And the second uh, part is if he's dumb enough to do something else off the field. And I, I think he's got enough people in his ear uh, to realize, hey, you've really got to mind your P's and Q's before April 30th because the only thing standing between you and number one is, is not getting in trouble again. So uh, I think he's smart enough to understand that. I, I think you saw Lovey Smith at the combine was kind of rationalizing all the previous off-the-field incidents. So I, I don't think there's any question 
the Bucks are centering in on, on, on Jameis Winston. Yeah, and obviously a lot of people who watched the Combine left there saying Winston was you know, clearly a better player. I think you and I have discussed that too. Where, after the Combine, in your opinion, did Mariota end up at? Because we had said, and I think you and I have discussed, we wouldn't be surprised if he dropped after the Combine. Where, realistically, is the lowest you can see him dropping now? Well, right now, I got him going six to the Jets. I think that's his low point. I think everyone understood that he was going to be uh, uh, he was going to uh, test very well as far as athleticism went, and he did. Uh, we all knew that. Uh, and as far as the the off the field stuff, it's the exact opposite of Jameis Winston. I mean, everybody raves about this kid as far as his. Uh, you know, his work ethic, his football IQ, uh, just his leadership skills. So all that was kind of understood. And I think he just, uh, you know, he just had a good week at the combine. And he just kind of reassured teams that all those things were true. Uh, so right now, I think, if anything, he helped himself by throwing at the combine because he showed some self-confidence, some self-assuredness. But he himself even even spoke to the fact that, he needs work on his mechanics, specifically his footwork, and that's the issue. Uh, there's only one team, and, and we all know who, who that is, that he could hit the ground running and be ready to play week one in the NFL, and that's the Philadelphia Eagles. Everywhere else he comes in as a project, but there are teams willing to wait because uh, the intangibles he shows uh, make you think that the gamble is eventually going to pay off. You know, I, I, I can't remember a quarterback of this type of situation where he fits one team so well and is a complete project for the other 31 teams in the league and yet could still be a first-round pick. I think that's pretty intriguing to see what ends up happening. Let me ask your opinion on this, John. How much value do you think Nick Foles has around the league if the Eagles are trying to move themselves up in any capacity? Does he have value for them to get from 20 to a spot where they want to improve their team more by using a player that maybe they think they can replace easily? Oh, I think he has quite a bit of value. You're talking about a league with a dearth of quarterbacks. We just mentioned names. You know, you look at at Josh McCown right now. He's going around like he's the Beatles around town, like he's Joe Montana, visiting team after team after team. Uh, and and a lot of people are very interested. We just talked about possible cuts in guys like Schaub and, and Castle, who we know what they are as NFL quarterbacks. Uh, you know, Mark Sanchez, Jake Locker as, as, as possible free agents. If you're looking for a quarterback, you're in deep water. So uh, the fact that you have a young guy who has shown a lot of success and uh, for all the warts that people like to say, you know, he, the bottom line is he's 14 and four as a starter, and that's that's pretty good. So I, I think he has a significant value around the NFL. And if the Eagles are looking uh, to make a move, they could certainly get uh, something uh, very good back for him. But uh, I, I, since day one, and I understand Chip Kelly's love affair with Marcus Mariota. I just don't think it's feasible. I've seen some of these trades. To me, it doesn't make sense that a team like the Washington Redskins would would trade with an in-division team to give a coach his dream quarterback. That doesn't make a lot of sense to me. <laughs> I said the same uh, thing yesterday, John. It just, to yeah. me, that one, that Redskins deal, and not to mention, I just don't think from 20 to 5, the Redskins gave up way more to move four spots up. How would they give up? that little package that Peter laid out yesterday. Yeah, it, it's just, it's, you know, not against Peter, but it's just nuts. I mean, they, they know better than anyone else. I mean, if you're going to go up that high, uh, I think the Rams went from six to two uh, to get RG3 and, and look at what they gave up. It's just, you know, it's it's fodder. It's fun to talk about sure. this time of year, but it just doesn't make sense on paper. Uh, and there's a reason for that. I, I think I've always said there's an outside chance the Eagles could get Mariota, but that'll happen after his pro day at Oregon if he performs poorly and if he starts dropping a little bit more, if he gets past the Jets at six, for instance, and you start talking about, you know, 10, 11, 12, wherever, 
then I think it's feasible that the Eagles can make a move and, and try to go in that direction. Bef- but uh, all the stuff you've seen this week, I, I think that's a little pie in the sky. Yeah, and before we get to your pick for the Eagles at 20 in your second mock draft, let's talk about the same thing with LaShawn McCoy because his name was mentioned in another opportunity to move up. Do you think the Eagles would be hesitant to use McCoy to move up in the draft? Uh, I don't, you know, believe it or not, I don't think the Eagles would be hesitant, but I I think people would overvalue uh, LaShawn McCoy as far as, you know, fans and think what he's worth. And that's just, again, it's not a shot at him. He's coming off a bad year for him. Uh, But it's the devaluation of the position we talked about with Peterson. It's the high cap number. When, When you look at allocating assets in the NFL, you don't want to pay uh, running backs $10 million a year or more because you think you can get similar production, even if it's a, a, a little bit less at a much lower cost. So I, I think even though he's a big name and even though it sounds good, I, I think, you know, a lot of people around the NFL would not value LaShawn McCoy nearly as much as people think they would. So many NFL stories continuing to emerge. I know there's some uh, rule changes, uh, one of which that's very intriguing to me, John, is the the college rule for the pass interference. There's some talk about them getting rid of that and going to the 15-yard thing, something that I think a lot of fans have been clamoring for. Do you think that's something we could see next year? Well, I love it. I've been clamoring for it for years. Uh, I just think when you see the game-changing – sort of plays you you see week after week in the NFL with these pass interference calls and a lot of them end up as being phantom calls and and the fact that you're just heaving it up and getting 50 60 yards uh just doesn't seem logical and I think it's taken away from the entertainment value of the game I think the college rule makes more sense uh but you know we'll see if enough NFL coaches try to get on board I, I think So many were frustrated uh, about how the game was officiated last season. I think there is going to be a push for the rule. I I don't see it uh, being implemented for next season, though. I Hmm. just think uh, it's going to be tough to get that through so quickly. I know we talked a couple of weeks ago about Mike Wallace. It uh, doesn't seem that he's interested in a restructure. I mean, uh, he's a pretty you know big-time wide receiver that could potentially be out in the market, or do you think it's more – um, possible that the Dolphins end up trading him? Well, you know, similar situation we just talked about with LaShawn McCoy. When when you look at a Mike Wallace, the cap number is so big, you say, yeah, that's an impact player. Maybe you can get something significant for him, but you won't be able to. So uh, the more likely scenario if the Dolphins want to move on is that, that they just will cut him. Uh, and he could be one of those high-profile cuts, Percy Harvin, Another receiver, you know, Andre Johnson, if you want to talk about that position. Uh, So there's a number of guys with, uh, you know, uh, these numbers that are just going to be too high, and they're going to have to either renegotiate and and come to a settlement or, or, or likely be released. It's very difficult, as we know, in general, to make trades in the NFL, and especially Uh, when you talk about those high salary cap numbers. Yeah, there's some interesting names, and uh, there's some free agents, obviously, as we're going to be keeping our eye on uh, with Des Bryant and the potential that uh, he could be getting himself possibly in trouble allegedly there. And obviously with uh, Demarius Thomas, they still got to figure out what to do with uh, Peyton Manning and his contract. The NFL never sleeps. That means John's awake 24 hours a day. I know you are, John. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, one thing, you know, we talk about the NFL's popularity all the time, and I think the key to it is the fact that you know, for all the talk of the off-the-field stuff and all, all that nonsense, the one thing the league does tremendously well is the calendar. Uh, and they've done a, you know, where it goes from the Super Bowl right to the Combine. Now we're talking about free agency, then the draft, then mini camps, then training camp, and boom, it never ends. We'll take a look at John's full mock draft 2.0 at sportsnetwork.com.